Shalom guys, welcome, greetings. It's nice to see you all twice in one day. It's a blessing. <laughs> I was sitting back and I was thinking, where are we heading? Where are we going? You know, you see, see the news and they're always, there's one that's either this way or that way, highly divided from what our president is doing with other foreign countries to medical decisions and on every front on every front we just see them divided as a nation what does that mean for us in the future and what state does that put the people in i've noticed lately a lot of people have been willing to compromise what they believe in for job security and i understand that i respect that and the aspect that you have to provide for your family. But here's two perplexing questions. What gains a man to own the whole world but to lose his soul? And a man is worse than an infidel if he don't provide for his family. Those two ideas seem to fight seem to collide and all I have to say for that is where do your principles lie what happened to the person who said now I ain't folding and I'm going to get it this way and I'm going to fight day and night for it I feel as though people have been pigeonholed and put into a box that they allowed and it's only getting progressively more and trapping. I can see in the, in the near future the freedom that we once had, which is waning fast, and so is rights. It's going to be a distant thing of the past that we tell our grandkids and say, hey, you know, it wasn't always like this. I remember. Uh, when I was 25 or 30 or 40, whatever age you are, that we were able to go outside and play. We was able to go to work and not have these stringent laws. We was able to have a good time without having it to be dictated on how it's to happen, and what's to proceed here and there. We was able to joke and jest. We was able to love others and show affection. We was able to have our own free thoughts. But as I look back, I see that we gave it all up for security. And I regret that. And that's seeming to be the conversation we're going to have with our kids and our great grandkids if we live that long things have been questionable it seems like all logic and common sense is being thrown out the window all ideas and idol and and idols are taking hold and telling us what to do but we have never been able to trust them fully there's been very various reasons to not trust him or to be apprehensive, skeptical. Where has all logic gone? To the point that you have to cover yourself just to go into a store, or go to school, to be educated. You have to sting yourself just to enjoy the pleasures that you had once ago. We're supposed to be the land of the free, <laughs> but we feel entrapped each and every way. We're supposed to be much better than these other countries. But my question is this, if you are wise amongst fools, does that make you truly wise? 
And if you're a fool among, amongst wise men, does that truly make you a fool? See, we've been comparing ourselves to others, but not to a, a greater standard. We've been told time and time again, do not strive for ideals because they're unattainable. You're trying to strive for perfection. We, Our spirit has been crushed to look for something better or to do better because we've been told it's ascertainable. We should love all our flaws because that's who we are. When did we let these ideas seep in that we should not make ourselves better? That we should not aim for something that is truly freeing? When that happened, what happened to the pursuit of happiness? When did things be okay that your opinion affects what my opinion should be? And when did it say, when was it that what I said, if it offends you and it wasn't directed towards you, that you have a right to file a complaint, to sue, and I have to take those things down? When did we start to be encapsulated? Those are just some thoughts that I've been having recently. And I don't like to pose questions or problems without a solution. For I feel as though that's what most people do. A lot of people might even know the answer but don't take action. So I, don't, I want to provoke thought and to cause execution. All right. Men, anyone who heeds this, take it dear. Do not forsake discipline. Do not forsake self-betterment. Learn who you truly are and the aspect of what you will tolerate and what you won't, and accept none less than that. Know that you have value and know that you provide value. Women, understand that we're not perfect and neither are you. This haughty behavior and this behavior of treating men as a plaything, a toy, or as a means to chase a bag will come to an end. And be careful because things, as I told you before, is encroaching upon a point of hostility, of violence in the near future. Have you not seen what's going on with these other countries? Have you not seen what's going on with Europe? Have you not seen what's going on with China or Haiti or South Africa, Canada? And you're a fool if you do not think it's coming to America. And I will have other videos as explaining exactly what's going on around the world and what's the biblical proportion that is being handed out. But right now, humble yourselves, and I mean this to everyone. Seek God because we're, we're approaching times that you're going to need him. Seek him while he's here, before the time comes and he's nowhere near. I hope this message was able to touch a few of you. I probably will be uploading two to three more videos in the next couple of days or next few hours. We'll see as the Holy Spirit leads. But I want to leave on a positive note. And that is this. Hope and will do not die until you surrender. It's all dependent upon how far you're willing to go. So with that in mind, fight two for now and to the very bitter end. Because only at the end shall you be saved. It says, endure to the end.
were being tested and tried on every account. And if we lack integrity, if we lack vigor, they will win. The saints will have the last laugh, but the saints are those who endure to the very end. Shalom, peace.